Yo, Joe. We're here to talk about the largest action figure place that ever released, the vintage G.I. Joe USS Flag aircraft carrier. Now, this playset was originally released in 1985 for a retail price of $109.99 US. It continued its release throughout the calendar year of 1986 until being discontinued in 1987. It measures 7 feet 6 inches long from the bow to the stern of the ship, and it is just under 3 feet wide from the port to the starboard side. Now, you'll be familiar with the USS Flag if you've ever seen the G.I. Joe cartoon from the 1980s, as it was featured in the theme song, as well as being featured in some of the episodes. It was also featured in the G.I. Joe comic and named after General Flag, who was tragically killed in issue number 19 of the comic by Major Blood. So, as far as the actual ship itself, there's some level of debate as to what it's based on as far as real-life ships. It does bear some semblance to the Nimitz-class ships, the Supercarrier-class ships, as well as the older Forester-class carrier ships. So, let's just jump in and have a look at some of the features of this magnificent playset. Before we dive in and have a close-up look of the ship itself, I just want to point out that a lot of the information that comes from this video does source from Mark Belomo's Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe 3rd Edition that was published in 2018. This book dedicates a full five pages worth of images, a lot of text on the history of the playset, and easily lost parts that we'll talk about later on in this video. I'm taking an overhead view here from the bow to the stern of this gargantuan playset just so you guys can see the sheer scale of it relative to the other three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe figures from 1985. There you can see the tow vehicle and the fuel tank that it comes with as well as the arrestor cable on the back of the ship here as well. Taking a quick look here at the very front of the ship, you'll see the radar on the left side. You'll see the two anchors below the front here as we pan around. And over here on the right side as we come around, you'll see the anti-ship gun on the right side there, as well as the 99 on the flight deck, just like how it looked like in the G.I. Joe cartoon. On the back or the stern of the ship, you'll see the anti-ship cannons there, as well as the very hard to find and easy to lose fan tail railing, as well as a radar dish as well that's on the back of this ship. Coming around to the back of the ship superstructure here, you'll see some rooms here, multi-purpose rooms, including the Admiral's chair and place where Keel Hall can command the ship from. You'll see the boat launch area here next to the elevator that I usually leave in the upright position. And just coming around to the other rooms here, you'll see some consoles against the walls of the lower deck. You know, you'll see some doors and some ladders that lead up to the top part of the ship, as well as the place where the microphone slash speaker system hangs on the back slash side of the ship. Coming to the front of the superstructure here, you'll see the antenna here that goes right on the top of the ship itself. You got the ray dome over there on the right side, and also a little further to the right here, you'll see the crane structure that comes in. Um, over here on the flight deck, you got some railings and some ladders to make it look quite realistic. And you've got the uh, missile box at the top here as you come back around that can fire up to six missiles, as well as a flag at the top of the flag. Here you've got the tow vehicle, which you can use to either pull the uh, green fuel tank, or you can use the tab to put into the front of the Sky Striker and tow that instead. And also note that the fuel tanker does come with a couple of nozzles. Towards the back here, you've got the arrestor cable as well as the arrestor hook, which can be used to help stop the Sky Striker or Conquest when they're trying to land in. I put the tomahawk here on the flight deck just so you guys can see the uh, scale of the flag relative to some of the air support equipment that G.I. Joe has. I did keep the propellers off of the tomahawk just so it would be easier to store back into its box. So let's talk about some of the harder to acquire and easier to lose pieces that uh, are part of the USS Flag playset. Looking at Keel Hall himself, while he can be a bit of an expensive piece, mostly it's the pistol that he's got, which most people lose, as well as this uh, fantail railing here that it goes right on the back of the flag on the underside. And a lot of parents, when they were assembling the flag, lost it just because it looks like it's part of the sprue that it came on and accidentally threw it away. So that's why it commands such a heavy value on the secondary market. 
And looking here over at the microphone system as well, this can be a hard piece to acquire. Now, mine still works, albeit barely, which is why I'm not playing the sound for you. I can kind of hear it dying, but at least it's there. Uh, we've got the blueprints as well here, which if you do find them, good luck finding them in good condition. More power to you if you can. Mine are slightly falling apart, but glad to have them in some way, shape, or form as well. I apologize that I'm a little bit off panel for this one. And also looking here, they've got the decal instruction sheets, which glad to have as well. And just looking at the file card here, I've got the Canadian bilingual mail away version of the file card as opposed to the original 1985 release that came with the flag itself. So let me just close out here with some final thoughts. Did I help you decide whether you want to buy a USS flag? Do you already own one, but then realize that it's too big for your living room or too big for your storage or your display area. Either way, you've got options. It's a beautiful piece. It's a holy grail to many different collectors. And the good thing about it is you always remember how and where you purchased it just because of the size and accomplishment factor and feeling of when you managed to bring it home. In my particular case, I got this from a gentleman named Patrick who shipped it out east. He had previously gotten it from a gentleman by the name of Graham who'd sent it to him. So, you know, I managed to track back two previous owners of this flag. And also with the fantail railing that I, when I originally got the flag, it didn't come with it. So I got that later on from a gentleman by the name of Eric who sent it in the mail and welcomed me to being part of the Admiral's Club of G.I. Joe flag owners, which, you know, I thought that was a kind of cool, touchy gesture. And I previously purchased Keel Hall from a toy store out in my area here. So like I said, there's always a great story when you're purchasing a flag. So how do you guys feel? Sound off in the comments. Let me know. And I'll see you again next time with some more toy content.